welcome back to my channel this video is way overdue because it's about an exam that I wrote or took a couple of months ago and I wanted to give my review my impression of the exam my study routine the resources that I've used to study for the exam so this video will be about reviewing exam family foundational of actuarial mathematics i think long term i think that's what it stands for but it's basically about long-term actuarial mathematics think about life insurance long-term care insurance etc etc so calculating that um just also like learning how to price and like learning different kind of scenarios and situations or um, different kinds of benefits that you can get when it comes to long-term insurance so I started studying for this exam in January and I was writing it early March so I had less than three months to study for it but that was kind of intentional because I knew it was a shorter exam it's a transitional exam because of the new process and the new pathway you can take this exam if you already have credit for the short-term actuarial math exam which I do so I can take take the long-term portion which is half an exam to transition to the new path but if you don't have credit for the short-term actuarial math exam you have to do the foundation of actuarial mathematics as a whole exam that includes both short term and long term and then you do an additional exam of either short term or long term actuarial math so because i have a credit my transitional credit was going to be a half credit of fam or fem which is fem l the long term portion of that exam so let's talk about studying. When I started studying for this exam, like I said, I started in January, but I planned it out properly so I have enough time to practice. Okay, one thing I'll say is that my lower exams practice has been very, very meaningful and helpful for me because sometimes that's that's how I learn, you know, than reading the materials. So when I was going through the learning materials, by the way, I used coaching actuaries as always. And it was very very useful I remember the videos were very helpful I understood what they were saying it was also very interesting content for me it's content that I haven't really done extensively in my college classes so it was interesting it was new stuff to learn so that was very insightful and I was always keen to like get to know more about how these insurance products work or how to price them or how to calculate them so I was very interested in the, co the actual content of the exam and then I spent a month and a half on the content part because it was short probably even just a month I targeted a month and a half so I have at least five to six weeks of practice but I think I spent about a month and then after studying I decided to start taking the practice exams I'm not the type that does quizzes in between of studying I'm the type I learn the material and then I go to practice and then if there's something in the practice that I'm struggling with and then I can go back to that specific chapter or subtopic so after I started practicing, I realized that I was struggling. Maybe it's also because I started practicing at level five and that's a very high level if you think about it. But then I was also like trying to start kind of in between. So I gauge whether um, I need to go back or I need to go a bit further in terms of my practice. So when I started at level five, I was devastated. I remember I think I spent two weeks on level five quizzes and I was failing like one out of ten, two out of ten. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, what what can I do? What should I do? And then I was talking to a couple of people. It's like, no, maybe you started a little bit too high. So like I think the best way to learn from this practice is to start a little bit below, like a level three coaching actuaries quizzes, and then you build from there. So I started at level three, level two. That's when I started learning more of like the basics. I know I learned this during my learning sessions, but then it was different. It was kind of like just integrating the concepts. It was kind of just 
knowing how to answer the questions but starting from the basic stuff. It was actually a good idea that I started at level three because after that I think I started gaining some confidence. I was getting like five out of ten, six out of ten and then I think I went to level four quizzes as well. And then I was still a little bit scared because I think when I was at level four, I had like three weeks left. I need to be at least at level seven for my exams and I'm still on quizzes and like trying to grind level four quizzes. And then after that, I just decided to go straight to taking the end level exams. And I started taking the exams, I think at level four until... I felt comfortable with level four, then I went to level five, and then I think there was an exam that bumped up my end level way too high. I think it was, I was at 4.9, and then I just went to like 6.7 or something because I had passed really well one of my practice exams. And so I decided instead of doing like level seven exams, I'm just going to continue grinding level five exams. And so I continued doing level five exams. Some days were really good, some days were, uh, you know, getting like 60s or like 70 and it was a little bit like demotivating. I think when I had a week left, I remember like being really focused on just grinding exams. And I mean, customizing my own exams at level five, level six and seeing where are my weaknesses? Because I realized that there were certain things that, not that I was struggling with, but I wasn't focusing on the little details. You know how actuarial exams, they always put that small detail that might throw you off if you don't pay attention or if you don't solve the problem without considering that small detail. So it was little things like that that I will miss out on. So I decided to practice more of those kind of questions where they have some tricky things going on in the problem for me to feel comfortable with paying attention to the details and also just being able to know how to solve it quickly. That's another point. In this exam, you need to know your shortcuts. You need to get a question and you can recognize what to do with it. So few days before my exam, I decided to do SOA questions. And when I was doing SOA questions, because I've done so much of coaching actuaries questions, I realized that I saw a question and I could immediately recognize what it's asking me to do or what I need to do. And so doing SOA questions, I think they have about 100 and something. I'm not sure, but I think it's 150 if I'm not mistaken. But doing SOA questions, I realized that either I've seen the questions in my coaching actuaries bank or... They are very similar in a sense that I can recognize them. But there were also other questions in the SOA um, exam bank that I haven't came across. So this is a strategy I always do before my exams is go through SOA questions because I find that you always find something that they may ask you in the exam and you don't know how to approach it because you're not familiar with it. So that was very, very helpful. Um, so after doing SOA questions, I decided the day before my exam to just relax and make sure I know all my formulas. I needed to know all my film. They were like, you know, those small topics that you don't come across when you're doing practice questions, but you have like one or two when you're doing your practice exams like once in a while. So I didn't want to lose marks on these easy problems because normally it's an easy problem, but you need to know the formula or you need to memorize the formula to recognize that this is how I need to solve this problem. But it's normally like a straightforward problem when it comes to these little topics that they don't really test on as much. So I needed to make sure that I knew my formulas and everything was like, I was even dreaming formulas to be honest. Like the nights before my exam, I was dreaming formulas. I was dreaming actuarial math. So that's how... Um, how much I felt like I needed to take in to really be able 
to be confident to really be confident in going into the exam the exam process was very easy it was as normal went to the testing center they let me in I think it was like 15 minutes early because I came early and I did my exam I finished like an hour the actual exam is one hour 45 minutes because it's a health exam so it's shorter and it's multiple choice so it's 20 questions and so my thing was I just wanted to do all the questions and go back to the ones I didn't understand that's my strategy for taking actuarial exams so the first two or three questions that I encountered were very challenging and were on topics that I wasn't that confident in and I was feeling a little bit defeated but I was like okay just keep going you might find other questions that are easier so I kept going and I think on my fourth question I felt very comfortable with what I was doing until like the last question so then I just came back to the earlier questions and tackled them with my time I think I had about an hour left so I managed to finish all the other questions that I was comfortable in 45 minutes and I had about an hour left to go over the ones that were a little bit challenging to take my time to work on them to think about them etc so I would say this is like the biggest strategy, not just for this exam, every exam is really don't get stuck on one question for 30 minutes and put all the other questions that you're comfortable with at risk of getting them wrong. So I think always save time by just moving on and coming back later to your questions. So that's what I did and luckily it did work for me. So after the exam, how I felt, I was, I was like, okay, that most of them were things that I was feeling comfortable with, but I was also, I don't know. I didn't know how I felt. Like I felt like there's still a possibility that I might fail depending on the pass mark, right? This is an exam that's very short, 20 multiple choice questions. So any single mistake anything you miss out on you can get 14 out of 20 or whatever and fail you know i don't know what the pass mark is i think it was 75 percent or something but thank god the results came out after two months i passed i passed with a seven i would say i'm okay because i passed that's all that matters really but i think in the past year all my exam passes have been on an eight so I guess maybe this exam was not that easy, but it was definitely an exam. Don't underestimate it because it's shorter. Don't underestimate it because it's long-term actuarial math. I would say the exam was fair, probably even a little bit tricky because of possibly some defect questions and staying on those questions for a longer period of time. So managing your time is an important factor. One hour, 40, 45 minutes for 20 questions that can be computational heavy if you don't know your shortcuts especially, I think is a fair game, probably even a little bit more difficult. So be mindful of your time. That's the most important thing. And then know your shortcuts do not underestimate the exam i think that it's it's an easy exam to pass if you have done the right things but it's also an easy exam to fail if you didn't focus on these little things that you need to pass the exam so yeah um that's the journey of my exam fam all and I'm glad that I made it through. It was my last exam pre-ASA. So I was really holding my breath right there to pass my seventh exam and God came through. But if you are taking this exam in the future, I wish you all the best and let me know if you have any further questions, need some guidance. I'm open to share my experiences and just, you know, what I think about the exam or my studying routine or whatever. But yeah, thank you guys and see you next time.